operator. Well, from experience, dude, that first time I worked on the Trump campaign in 2016, politics is the dirtiest fucking game in the world, cuz. It is. It's, um... You, man, yep, that's has, not even speaking on our side. I'm talking about from a, a standpoint of having my social media hacked after my name coming oh, out I saying that I, I was on the a, social media team. Trump. I don't give a fuck about them social media. I see. That's my platform. That's That was my job. to, And I love my boy, dude. I love him. But every time he tweeted something, I was who's just that? Trump. Every time yeah. he tweeted, my job was to spin it. <laughs> so every time he tweeted something. Yeah, well, like, like I told oh, you, fuck. that was a political job right there, too. Oh, boy. At its finest. So tell me, all right, you branched out and started your own thing. I did. All right, what was your, your thought process in terms of how nerve-wracking was it for you to do that? It wasn't when I seen it for what it was. So you just pulled the trigger like that? Yeah. I um, Pretty much when you... When you realize what a, what your reality been for for a while, you kind of kind of start to see things a little different. And your name of your company is Construction Solutions, right? Yes, that, and I have a trucking company as well. Yes. Oh, by the way, welcome back to Unwoken, the number one podcast in the world for young conservative media. That's a fact, my facts, of course. Here with one of my lifelong friends, Daniel Baker, motherfucker. Tough son of bitch right there. <laughs> tough son <of> bitch. <laughs> Not as tough as your pops. Oh, old Jeffrey used to run around the track with a, a cigarette in his mouth and a no doubt. Oh, Milwaukee. <laughs> they, they said whenever he was coaching at Delco, they they walk outside and Jeffrey being a crop top with his tuck with his tucked in uh, PHP outfit. Well, no, they said whenever he ran around the track, he had the crop top Chicago Bears uh shirt, and he had a, a cigarette in his mouth, the high socks. <laughs> He had an old Milwaukee in the end zone. <laughs> I can definitely see that. He used to have the same cigarette, them long ones. The uh, the the Rouse, the Rouse, yeah. Them long ones. But I haven't touched tobacco in two years, man. No. Quit dipping. I'm glad you did, cause I sure as hell didn't. Whenever you started Construction Solutions, what was the first kind of business you got into? Did you start your rental? Well, it was it was, it was supposed to be a rental company, but um, being that I just branched off from. You know, my dad, who was kind of hard to to supply that type of cash flow with no credit, because at that time I didn't give two shits about credit, and I still don't, which is kind of a bad thing, but not really. Um, and then I I use what I do best. I um, I just started reaching out to my my you know the people I knew in certain spots and really touching all resources you know so in terms of solving, and, then, and then the rental equipment you know eventually turned into uh you know operating equipment which was i had to so i kind of it was kind of a weird transition so in terms of problem solving at the job or on a job site how do you combat how do you combat certain problems that come up in the work like say a project that y'all have going on how do you combat that? A lot of curse words and wisdom. <laughs> it past experience. Um, it's all different, man. I mean, you, you're talking about so many different personalities running all different types of equipment. You know, there's a lot to go wrong. You know, not everybody's been through the same scenario, and even I haven't. But it's not a, it's not what you know when you. When everything's going right, it's what you know when the shit hits the fan. Yeah, if you can keep that composure. Yeah, so that's, that's one thing I've always been good at because I've always been in a lot of shit. So I just always kept it uh, flowing at a good rate, you know? Do you think that over time, as more of these problems sometimes surface, do you find that it becomes easier to handle over no, time? No, because they're never, they're never, they never give warnings. It's, it's always... But your problems are 99% of the time are the same thing. Well, see, the reason I ask is because 
I listen to a lot of these self-help books and a lot of these um, brain uh, these psychology books that they talk about, you know, your um, subconscious. Like, say, I'm gym of a restaurant. Say there's a customer that's not happy. And I do not go up to that customer because I'm nervous or scared. Say, I, I don't do that. You're thinking that you're avoiding that problem, but subconsciously, your brain's remembering that. You want to make it right. So the next time it happens, it's going to be twice as hard for you to approach that person and handle that situation. Well, I don't have that issue. Oh, yeah, you just you deal with roughnecks? No. I mean, at the end of the day, it don't matter who you are, where you are, where you're from, what you got. You know, they all started somewhere. Mm-hmm. They all made mistakes. And it's they're somewhere because of they didn't let people define them by you know so it's um you know what i mean why why be scared to approach somebody you know i don't understand you know but some people don't have that life experience like we do well and that's with it or with it not i mean i mean approach every situation with you know um the right mindset, you know, treat it like, I know it's harder for me to say, because there's a lot of people that's going to see this and they go, but I learned over the years. I mean, I used to be very confrontational when I, you know, about touchy subjects. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, when you give them what you want, they win. So that's what we were talking, me and you were talking about earlier in terms of people forming their own opinions about others without getting to know that person ahead of time. Do you think that that's something more that, uh, do you, you find that that's the biggest problem in terms of reputations is that people really do listen to the opinions of others instead of actually going up to that person? No, and meeting them? no, no. What do you think it is? Laziness. And, um, and, and, um, it has a lot to do with laziness, and it has also a lot to do with, you know, um, help me find that word, Scott. Uh, uh, mo- lack of motivation? No, no. Uh, self-awareness. Self-awareness, all right. So when you, you have somebody who constantly talks about the flaws of other people, I mean, you're going to bring out, you're going to bring out just one side of every touch, one side of every story. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be yours, it's going to be theirs. But ignorant talking to ignorant, just <laughs> yeah, it's, it ain't going nowhere. But you know, if because not nine times out of ten, the people who talk about you is the ones that are just the ones that you know claim to be your friend in your face. You know, it is always. You see, I, I don't really find that I have that problem because, as like I was telling you earlier, we pick up right where we left off every time. A hundred percent, but people. But, nowadays, but hold on, though. but we have longevity. Yeah, all right. Involved here. I mean, I had, you know, your dad. I mean, look what you gave me. You mm-hmm. know, there's not many people to say that. Yeah. You know, I, I would. You never gave me a reason to really think you would ever, you know, to go against me out of jealousy, out of, you know, whatever it may be. You know, but I think just today's world needs to. Uh, they need, they need to stop. They just need to focus on their cell. I think they need to put down those phones. It ain't even a phone. Well, you see, I have a rule. Whenever we eat, it, eat at the dinner table, any of me and my friends, phones go in the middle of the table. Well, Face down. Human interaction, man. No, I know. 100%, man. And it's, you know, it, it's... And I've learned the hard way. You know, I used to think certain things of certain people, and then they were never true. They never... They never Deemed to be true. Mm-hmm. Did I ever speak about them? No, but I learned. You know, not everything you hear about people is true. No, I just re- and look at, at our age. Jealous. There's a lot to play with jealousy. Oh yeah, jealousy is always going to be a thing with people. A lot man. of a lot of people are going to believe. You know, you had the easy way. Whether they, you know, for instance, you know, yes, I, I did have a dad who provided a lot for me. But when I started my business and I went. Why don't you move your mic a little bit more towards you? When I started my business and I went. 
you know, he it became a big deal. A lot of relationships involved, a lot of, you know, um, a lot of people seen it as, uh, like, rebelling against, you know, against that. Well, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, like, was it a hard conversation with your dad to say that you're starting something up? We didn't have a hard conversation. Just kind of went out and did it? Pretty much. Kind of like a... Kind of like a, um, I want to see you do good, but I just don't want to see you do good without me. Type uh, of deal. All right. So, but whatever. Well, I, I guess that you know, I guess that can be hard from from both perspectives. It wasn't hard for me. I, well, you know, I'd say because at some point you got to cut off feelings, whether it's family or not. When it comes down to business. Oh yeah. No, whether it come, when it comes down to self self health, self what you know, self mental mental state, mental health. I mean, you got to see things for what it really is. Yeah, that's true. And I think a lot of problem lies with people these days. They um, they they rather be you know confident with a lie than you know be told with the truth. Well, people people are hard about not going to tell that truth. Also. They're too scared to actually tell somebody the truth whenever, in all reality, you're not helping anybody out by not telling your friend the truth or telling somebody the truth. Now, I mean, there's a difference between telling the truth and being rude, though. Well, so you have... There's a big difference between being rude and telling the truth. Yeah, but you see, when I always told a story, I always told it in different versions. Mm -hmm. Same outcome, just different ways of getting that outcome. Yeah, yeah. That way, when I hear it, I know who said it. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's a pretty smart. It's kind of like Ozark, man. You ever watch Ozark? No, I don't watch TV. It's like uh, the cartel boss was asking them, oh, "What would you do to the person you caught stealing?" And it's usually the person who says, "Uh, oh, I'd let them go, give them a warning." That's the person who fucking stole the money. You know, she did like that. Yeah, and I've dealt with that too, man. Just recently went through that. Somebody stealing. Yep. And um. I just let it go, you know. So tell me, what's a day in the life of Daniel Baker now without the phone calls? <sighs> Driving very fast, cursing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say fuck about every three words, fuck, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotta get a fuck calculator for the podcast I'm gonna start putting on. Talking just mad shit on anyone temporarily that brings any type of uh, headache to my life that I have to deal with. Not have to, but chosen to. I um, mean, just the hardest thing really is just, um, honestly, is just keeping yourself happy, man. Put it all balls down to What would you say is the biggest thing you've learned about yourself since you started your own business? Honestly, admit when you fucked up. Owning up to your shit? Owning it straight up. Take it on the fucking chin. Yeah. You know, I just went through a bad accident, you know, late, recently in uh, May. You know, uh, you know, I hurt a person seriously bad. You know, um, I was not intoxicated. I was not wasted. I wasn't on us. But I did do it. I took it on the chin, you know. So, you know, then you had those people that went, you know, bash me on Facebook, but they're on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You know, by the time their comment went through, I was already back to doing what I was doing. And that's the people that need, that need to focus on themselves. So... You don't get you don't get places by worrying about other people and what the fuck they're doing. It's simple. How, do you think that you've learned over the years, as they say, with age, you've been able to have that vision to where you see the people who are actually in your corner and those who aren't? Well, so. I might piss a few people off right here. Dude, this is unwoken, brother. 
we really don't but give a fuck about in every those friendship you have somebody that in every friendship you have there's always that one person who every friend looks to but it's also that friend that gets blamed for the bad decisions that they peer pressure them into but um, I've never asked my friends to, what what I should do. You know, every bad decision we ever made together was because I wanted to do it, not because them. You know, so if you're gonna be, you know, they, if I'd have jumped off a bridge, they'd have did it too. Make sure you land on your feet, though. Make sure you can swim, partner. Yeah. Don't jump off that Chaffalai Basin Bridge, though. Uh, I ain't going to say I ain't done it. You know, because th- that's the same reason why I do not go kayaking in Lake Martin. Look, I'll dive with sharks, which I do. I don't see you diving with sharks, Scott. Because. <laughs> <laughs> I would dive with sharks, but I will not go kayaking in Lake Martin because I will not fuck around with dinosaurs. The mosquitoes, man. No, di- they got dinosaurs in there, bro. Oh, dinosaurs. They got mosquitoes. They got a in fifteen there, foot Alphonse in there. Yeah, fuck the mosquitoes. No, I'm talking about those damn gators. I ain't got time for no no wet mosquitoes, man. What the hell? I want to go fucking kayaking with gators for. But no, back. All right, so hang on. Back to what we was talking about. And one thing I do realize, half of my best friends are dead now. But. Everywhere that they went that was worth fucking talking about was because I brought them there. You talking about like adventures or? No, anything. You know, um, you know, at times of their life when they were making the most money, times of life they were taught the most shit, times of life they were in certain places. You know, nobody ever got me a job. I got everybody else a fucking job. You know, um, so at that point, it's, I was not worried about who was in my corner. You know what I'm saying? I can understand what you're saying there. I knew they were my friends. You know, I knew they were people who talked, you know, somewhat about, you know, but time will tell. Time will tell what? Time will tell everything. Time, time will... Tom will, will unveil every spoken lie. You know, and um, right now, I, that's family, friends, that don't make a fuck who you are. But at the same time, blood doesn't necessarily mean family. It's going to come from the closest person to you. That's the thing about it. What, you think in terms of betrayal? Or? No, I don't think I know. I See, I can't, I can't look at things that way. Because but the, Scott... You've never, I mean, I kind of lived the life that, mo, you know, it's a little different. Yeah, I can understand. Um, I understand where you're coming from. You know, it's just. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to try to find the good in every person, which you do want to believe there's good in everybody. No, I do. I do approach every situation like there is good. In people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, yeah, we got to be realistic. But to, keep, but to keep it real right here, I mean, you know. We've all had betrayal happen to us. It's just a matter of, do you allow it to happen again? No, absolutely not. <clears throat> just can't make the same mistake. That's the whole. But that's the thing, though. It all most things of that start to that of that nature start of um, jealousy, hatred. You could be going through the same battle with somebody, but you make somebody yourself in it, and the other one don't. You know, they're always going to have envy towards you because you was able to do that. Seven deadly sins, man. One of them right there, envy. You know. I think more people have so, envy than others. So, you know. Um, I, I think envy envy might be the most common one, especially nowadays in the social media type jealous, of world. Jealous, man. People, people compare life to people too much. 
You know, people are not really living for who the fuck they're, you know, they're not enjoying nothing. So That's why time's flying. So there's this video that um, I watch about once a week, and it's called How to Trick Your Brain. Well, this guy goes in depth, and he talks about how whenever you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do, people, they usually look at their phones, look at their feet, do some shit, man, to follow that same routine every day, every day. And people try to make changes in their lives whenever things go bad. But why not try to make a po- make, why, why not try to make a positive change in your life in a state of pure joy and happiness? Yeah, but hold on, but that 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 automatically brings it back to when people only pray to Jesus or God when the times are tough. Yeah, that brings back to religion. That yeah. brings back to you know. So, one thing I've always done was pray when it's good, pray when it's bad. I send prayers every day, every morning, every night. And, you know, it, and if I don't fall asleep before midnight at 12.01, I have to get up and say my prayers again just in case I don't wake up in the morning. You know, but there's been a lot of times when I've got on my hands and knees. And, you know, it's... Um, you know, people only want things when it conveniences them. And they don't make it a... They don't make it a daily. It's like your like a, like my sciatic nerve problem I had a long time ago in my back. I went to the chiropractor for you know for advice, and he just looked at me like I was a fucking idiot. And he said, "It's just like hair. You don't comb it every day. It's just gonna get knotted again. Mm-hmm. You know. You talking about stretching your back out? You know, stretching. You know, whatever's hurting. Yeah. Stretch it. You gotta stretch it. You gotta you know comb it. He said, it's just like hair." He said, I, I can't do nothing for you. So do you stretch every day now? Uh, absolutely no. Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> <That's what laughs> so, the, the last thing on my mind is stretching, too. You got that back thing in the uh, in the garage. My man. back's good, man. My back's good. It's um, self-motivation. Dude, and that is a big thing. It's your mind. It's your head. It's your thing. mind game. It's your headset. But you also have to find your shtick in what you like to do. And a lot of well, people that's when it re- are being so a realist becomes valuable. You know what I'm saying? That's when. That's when it. You know. That's when you make changes. But you can also make changes in the state of pure joy and happiness as well. You could, but. You also have to be, you know. Be realistic. But also whenever you're, like a big key factor is, so I could walk into a bar or any room and I'm always smiling, always in a good mood. Now what if I'm sitting on that couch and I have nobody around me? How am I whenever nobody's around? If I'm not smiling whenever I'm by myself and in a state of pure joy and happiness when I'm by myself, how can I give off that energy? Well, you have fake personas. Well, that's what I'm saying. You have in public, the you have personas. you have in public personas, and then you have genuine, real people. But only the people that are worried about it are the ones who's giving off fake persona. But you can also try to help people to get build that confidence, though. Yeah, yeah, but look, we're adults now, Scott. Well, yeah, but ain't nothing wrong with helping people. Uh, make no, I'm a hundred percent with it. But if you're going out making, still making bad decisions, you're doing nothing to change your finances, you're doing nothing to... And look, I'm a terror, and I burn up some fucking cash. I burn up money. <laughs> <laughs> I get mad at it sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But prioritize a little more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Prior, prioritize. Yeah, making making your budget list, making sure... I, don't, I never even did all that dumb shit. I've never done it. Because most people nowadays don't have the obedience to follow. Well, have you ever written down your goals that you have? I have people in my head. What do you mean? What do you mean by people in your head? I place my success level against people that are there already. I already know what I want. It's in my head. It's engraved. I've been dreaming about it since I was a kid. It's what I'm best at. It's what I know. It's what I'm untouchable at. Cutthroat. Not cutthroat. I'm going to beat you fair and square. Well, yeah, winning. Cutthroat. Cutthroat's winning fair and square, too, sometimes. Yeah, but... It's like Tiger Woods said. But you see, a lot of people only live by being cutthroat nowadays. Do you believe in karma? Absolutely. Me, too. You get what you, you, get what you give. Yep. 
Goes around, comes around, man. But that's why retaliation is just best served as. Now you see, I'm a, I'm a very revengeful motherfucker. Dude. Well, Scott, I am too. Okay, I'm. A, <laughs> I'm, t- uh, I'm saying that, but that's from that's from uh, paying for attorneys for ten fucking years, and you know, yeah, I used to like to fight. Yeah, absolutely. But did it get me nowhere? No. But one thing I did do was make sure I'm gonna build, you know, build back what I lost in the same place in town as I did it in. I'd, I'd and you're gonna yeah. have, dude, you're gonna have haters. You're gonna have people who, from all types, high end, low end, middle end, I'm like, fuck. Well, you see, here's my thing. I don't, I used to follow by that saying, if you don't, if you don't have any haters, you're not doing something right. You know, like Keith Frank said. But, you know, I'm more along the lines of, whenever you are just genuinely, I'll give you an example. You know how I walk up to people I'm like Scott Davis, it's damn good to meet you. Yeah, yeah. So at Corner Bar, about two months ago, I saw somebody I hadn't seen in about two years. Man, one of my partners, they used to come to Grand Street all the time when I was working there. Well, this dude was talking to him, and uh, somebody came up, gave me a hug, and the next person said, "Scott Davis, damn good to meet you." And uh, this guy goes, "I know." He goes, you "Introduce yourself to everybody here." Say, oh, cool, man. Well, nice goatee, bro. Trying to make small talk. He goes, cool. Uh, now, can I get back to my conversation? And I looked at him. I said, sure you can. <laughs> right just, on, motherfucker. Just, sta- just stared at him. Just stared at him the entire time. And all, yeah, he had but, just found out his old lady was cheating on him or something, no doubt. And I'm, I'm sitting there like his, my buddy afterwards. He came up to me and goes, dude, how you kept your composure like that? I don't understand because that dude's been being a dick to everybody all night. I said, it's real simple. Yeah, but he's fighting himself. Yeah, yeah. I said, it's real simple, dude. You just lock lock eyes with somebody. You can look in, You can really look into them as a person. You can really look into somebody. Every, and I've done it. I've done it for a few years. You know, there was a, there was a point in time when all my mistakes was pawned off on other shit. And it was just a revolving deal. You know, every, it was just revolving. And... It, you know, now, you know, and so when you choose to become somebody or try to, or, you know, give your damn that, then, but I'm going to tell you right now, when you get to the point of living in your truck in Red's parking lot to make your business work, you, you're at the point, you know, of, of, of self admit You're at the point to, 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 to take your fuck ups on the chin. You know. So tell me something good, something excellent that's going on in your life right now. Um, I'm ahead of schedule. Where I want to be is better where I, than I thought I'd be. Um, everything I got is paid off. I don't live in a big house. I live modest. But I literally, I'm doing what I enjoy the most. And you're damn good at it. It's always, it's always been a deal of mine. Well, you've had the proper training and trade since you've been young. I've had some, I've had some very knowledgeable and skillful people around me, yes. But well, one of the things that I admire about you in terms of your business accolades and your mindset, dude, is you're not, I'm not saying abrasive, but I'm saying you are straight to the point of what you want, what you want to get done. And you don't sugarcoat it. You don't beat around well, the bush. Well, I've I've come to the point where when you're in business, you need to change your perspective on that. Because it's no longer about what you want. It's about what can you do for other people. But it's all about how it can benefit the collective good at that point. Correct. But you need to know when to cut it off. Mm-hmm. And that comes with training. And that comes with time. Knowing it, how to cut it that comes off. With, it comes with... Man, there's so many different ingredients to, 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 to making this thing work, but it really boils down to the to the, the key the key principles of being a decent human being. So do you have for your business, do you have certain salespeople? No, hell no. You don't have to deal with all that. No. I'm the sales guy. You wanna sell me this pen? Yeah. Sign your signature on that piece of paper. 
<laughs> I don't have a pen. I got one right here, bud. Is it quality? Quality or not, you need it, and I don't. <laughs> Supply and demand, there, Scott. Day. <laughs> <laughs> you ever saw that? You ever saw that trick on how uh, Jordan Belfort? So I don't. Uh, I don't watch t- man. I don't watch. Uh, I don't have a TV in the house. Honestly, my house is very dry. I have no. No, no. People would look at me and think I'm crazy. I'll show you this pen. Let's see it. So how long you been in the market for a pen? Well, I was taught to write with a feather. With a feather? So you use ink? Yeah. What kind of ink do you use? Non-petroleum-based ink. What if I told you that instead of having to buy two of those cartons of ink? This little magic pen right here supply you for a whole year of ink. I don't want you to prove it. Well, and, it. And if it didn't hold up to you, to what you said it was, I want all my money back. You get all your money back because I'm guaranteeing you this pen will last you a year. But what makes it enjoy it more than my ink feather? It is red, white, and blue, sir. Yeah, well, my fucking pen, my feather's from a bald eagle. That's a $10,000 fine by the U.S. government. No, it was found, I was found in my yard. Still $10,000 fine by the U.S. government. A feather? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> well, only me and you would know about needing this fucking ink, all right? <laughs> but I'm going to just tell no, no, like, no joke, dude. Like, it is literally, it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's by accident and you don't even know it's an eagle feather. If you have a bald eagle feather in your possession, it is a $10,000 fine. Wouldn't surprise me. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Well, the people running this country are fucking nuts. Dude, I don't know how long it's been in the Constitution or the laws, but, I mean, maybe the Endangered, Endangered Species Act, but, dude. All right, let me ask you this. All right, say uh, you, you like horror movies? No, because the, 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 the girls always trip and fall and... All right. Well, you know horror. You know horror movie characters, right? Yeah, well, some of them. All right. So you say you're in the WWE. I used to fuck with that. Now, dude, back in the back day, in the Triple day. H, DX. No, man, not Triple H, dude. Don't Stone. Know. Let me guess. Stone Cold. No. The Rock. That was a great era, though. That was an era that I've never. Oh, The Rock, with. Undertaker, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, dude, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Kane. Dude, that Rick, was Rick Flair. Man. Rick Flair, <laughs> the Golden Age, man, dude, the Golden Age. Rey Mysterio. They don't make it like they used to, man. Eddie Guerrero. Oh yeah, dude. The the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Boys. What about the uh, uh, the Guerrero? Eddie Guerrero and what, what? Chris Benoit. Chris killed himself, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, in the swing. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. That was a very a different time. Kurt man. Angle. Kurt Angle. Yeah. Whenever Stone Cold would sit in the middle of the ring and fucking drink Rank, beer. Chug beer all day. Dude, did you ever see uh, Stone Cold does a BuzzFeed and he's like, try these different cocktails? No, every time he did that, he beat somebody's ass, though. <laughs> dude, that dude's... <laughs> that dude's Triple H is uh, now just big time. In, uh, he runs it, don't he? I think so, yeah. That's what happens when you're banging the, daughter, the owner's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> You get in real tight. Scotty too hotty the worm. Yeah, you get in real tight. Kids kids today cannot be coached by the way we were coached. Fuck no. They cannot. Dude, my biggest downfall was missing out my first year of pony, thinking I can go back and be the same. Dude, it was ruined. And oh. Coach Gary Williams' daddy, Don, is the one who told me I did not make All-Stars. I was – I shut it down after that. I was pissed. I remember uh, I tore my rotator cuff, and I came back, and I just finally started swinging the bat again. Because once I made contact with it, it was flying because Blake Reshore threw a, a hanging curve at me my first game back, and I hit it over the monster. But who was the – who was – But, uh, yeah, they told me, too, because I missed so many games. They said, dude – I didn't miss any. I was in it. I was out for about four weeks. And then I tried to swing a bat and pony. I came back way too early one time. And I'm sitting there. I took one swing, dude. And all of a sudden, you heard it. And Chomp saw it. And Chomp goes, oh, he's done. Yeah. Well, that's why they wouldn't let me jump, throw junk ball. Is that? They wouldn't let me throw junk ball. Yeah, yeah. But I really wasn't too good at it. I had a good fastball. And I was good at hitting people that I didn't like. 
Like Damon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the dude's Jack now, boy. Yeah, he's fucking Jack. I see him all the time when I go to the gym. I ain't been. I, I go on and off, but he uh thought about me and him hated each other. Hated each other. I'm talking like with a fucking passion. I remember, dude. We we hated those uh, we hated all the private school kids that we had to play with, bro. <laughs> well, I was just. I love them now, though. I still love you, Lance. Lance. Westwall. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love you, buddy. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. That was a lot of guys. Maxwell, Lance. They were, Max, all, they were yeah. all from Turlings or STM yeah. at one point. Yeah. It was, yeah. I uh, ever told you that story, dude, too. My dad coached at uh, Slam and Jam, the STM basketball camp. Yeah. All the time. And, um, but it was always the smart kids that whipped our ass. Yeah, well, you see, Dad, once I'm at the Slam and Jam, I'd won uh, a few awards over there. I'm like, Dad, I want to go play for Coach Danny. Because I never – my dad was never my head Danny. coach. Danny. Danny the head Broussard? basketball coach at STM. I never played for my dad. My dad was never my head coach. He always wanted me to be coached by different people. Always. Until I got to my high school and Como was going the route it was. He goes, son, you can transfer over here if you want. He goes, come play three – come play, Man, we went come to, play we three went, We went to school a lot of – Great athlete. We did, dude. We had all the athletes in the world. We just a lot. We just. I'm gonna tell you what it is. I'm gonna tell you no. You no, say it. I can't say no, it. No, no. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. You say it. I ain't saying it. Because you didn't even see it at that time. But it's back to what I said when we started this conversation. Politics. Deep pockets. Well, on a lighter note, I'll tell you something funny. I told Dad I want to go play for Coach Danny. Me and Dad come home. Why you want? Why you don't? Why you want to avoid that situation? Because so man, I got I got I got my coaches. I love, bro. I love. I understand Danny. that, and I understand that. But that's they, the only thing I want. And I talk about everything on here. That's the only thing I will not get into is talking about former coaches who, as a person, have helped me grow. No, 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 no. And I, look, this is not. No, no. Hold on. I think oh, we're talking about two different things. Well, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking about the reason why some schools were so hit. The oh. hidden talent was never exposed. Oh God! Oh yeah, dude. The, the recruiting. Oh God. Rick, dude, look, look at, look at, this. bro. Come on, Scott. Oh, dude. Like, oh, I know, I know. But, That's the reason why I passed high school. But they dude. split. They split. They split. Uh, whenever they split the public and private schools, the year after we got done, I'm like, well, fuck. That could have benefited. <laughs> yeah, we we'd have killed it. But we were, we were already killing it whenever we came up. I mean, that's what I was saying. The only time we lost, I ever had a losing record. But I'm going to tell you what it was. It was our... We played together. Yeah, but it, it, I'm going to tell you what it was, was the coaches weren't holding us accountable for actions outside of the sport as much as private schools were. Oh, yeah. We they were, definitely didn't take it as seriously. They were holding yeah. them more accountable for it. If they wanted to play ball, they had to make this. You know, if you missed that, you didn't get to do this. Yep. You know... They could say we were – people say we were privileged or one. No. I mean, yeah, yeah, we were. You know, and that's why STM was great. They're disciplined. Discipline. 100% discipline is what, 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 what greatness evolves around. And you can talk to any of those guys who played against us. They, they played smart. You can talk to any of those guys we who played had, against we us. Had, they'll tell you the same thing that they we said. Had, Y'all had all the best athletes. Uh, dude, we had collegiate. We, just, we had collegiate athletes. Every single one of us could have went and played sports. And, and and and, but you know what they had off the field. The same as when it, they were on the field was this. Exactly. They'll tell you. They'll and, tell and you. And I'm gonna tell you that's the coach's fault. It's a reflection of leadership. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's a, it's it's the coach's fault. Now, whether or not a child got to play or not because of, you know, their um, participation in something or, or whatever it may be, you know, reflects on them. But at the end of the day, that they were being led by one guy. You know, when a, when a, when a team loses, who the fuck they blame? Coach. Coach or the quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know, but it real t- it takes constructive criticism to – to really point out the issue, but it takes it takes minds who think alike, and it takes egos being put aside for two wrongs to to to, to make one right. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. It, it, it takes 
you know, it, like I said, ignorance, breeding ignorance ain't going to make shit. That's fair. Well, hell, brother, let's end it off on that because I know you guys have to do. We got a big meeting. We have a big meeting, big announcement coming up today, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. Well, this is, like I said, one of my lifelong friends, one of my greatest friends of all time. I love you, buddy. Love you too, brother. I hope you do well with this. Bro. You're going to go to the top. Damn right, I'm going to take you with me too. Yeah, well. We all going to be living nice. When I'm done, T, y'all ain't never going to fucking see me again. <laughs> yeah, you getting the fuck out of here. I'm out. I'm out. Well, hell, brother. That's Daniel Baker. I'm Scott Davis. This is Unwoken. God bless. Take care. I'm going to see your asses next week. Roll Cajuns, baby. <laughs>